Hi, my name is Dale Hitchcox, and I'm a member of the BC Black History Awareness Society. This video features Doug Hudlin, who is a descendant of Charles and Nancy Alexander, pioneer settlers of early Victoria. The video was shot on April 23, 2010. Doug is 87 years old. Doug was born and raised in Victoria and lived his whole life here. He has been married to Agnes Hudlin for 53 years. He is an inductee into the Greater Victoria Sports Hall of Fame and the BC Baseball Hall of Fame. He is a founding member of the BC Black History Awareness Society. What follows is Doug's brief account of the life of Charles and Nancy Alexander, who lived from the early 1800s to the early 1900s. Doug Hudlin. I'm born and raised in Victoria, B.C., on the corner of Yates and Cook Street. I'm related to Charles Alexander, and that my grand, my grandfather was his son. That is, he was my great grandfather. I am part of the third generation after Charles and Nancy. Charles was born August 16, 1824, in St. Louis, Missouri. He was a Freeborn, he's a free black of a, <coughs> of a black mother. Nancy was born May the 25th, 1834, in St. Louis, Missouri. She was also a free black. They were married in Springfield, Illinois, on December 25th, Christmas Day, 1849. Charles was a carpenter who built and ran a gristmill in St. Louis. He's a very good speaker. He was a was <clears throat> to become a lay minister as well as a farmer and a prospector. The first child, Martha, was, was born in 1851. The second, Agnes, in 1854, was stillborn. The third, James, in January of 1857. <clears throat> it was at this time that they decided to leave Missouri and travel west to, to the gold fields of California. The journey began in the spring of 1857. Nancy, Charles, and their two children were accompanied by four friends and a guide, Mr. Hollenbach. They traveled in a van pulled by a four, a four yoke bullet team. The, the journey took four months. They followed the Missouri River to the Platte River and then on to Laramie. From Laramie, they, they followed the Sweetwater River and into Fort Hall, then down to Great Salt Lake. The Humboldt River took them to Carson Sink, Nevada, then across the Great Divide to San Francisco. Charles was sure they would make the trip safely, as he had faith in the Bible, his compass, and his logbook. The biggest hardship was marauding Indians until Mr. Hollenbeck killed uh, 22 of them. They reached California, foot sore and tired. Charles worked in the gold fields, but, but was not very successful. On July the 1st, 1858, Charles and Nancy boarded the ship Oregon to Victoria in response to Sir James Douglas's call for colonists. Victoria was then a, a tent-covered tent city. They made their home on the site, on the site now occupied by the Hudson Bay Company. The, their fourth child and first Canadian born was my grandfather, Thomas. He was born on February 6, 1859. Again, Charles looked for gold up the Fraser River. And this time he was fairly successful. On his return, he built the Finlayson home on Bay Street near Douglas. The Finlaysons were also pioneers. Their fifth child, Lucretia, was born on March 30, 1861. In the fall, the Alexanders moved to South Sandwich. The family resided here for 33 years and farmed. During that the family increased to 12. 
Charles was junior in 1863, William, William in 1865, Fred in 1867, Henry in 1870, Edward in 1872, George in 1875, and John in 1876. George died at infancy at six months of age. Most of the men were teamsters. They, they were big men with very large hands and muscular. Charles built the first school in South Saanich and became a trustee. He assisted in forming the Temperance Society. In 1862, Charles initiated and assisted in the building of the first Shady Creek Church and one of its first preachers. The original church was located between the Pat Bay Highway and East Sandys Road, but the last location, the exact location has, has been lost. Tragedy struck in 1890 when James, age 33, his wife Mary Ann, and Edward, age 18, and his lady friend, Miss Phelps, went ice skating at hum Humber's Pond, the brickyard. It was 9 o'clock at night and dark. James went out on the ice first, before the others were ready. Hearing a shout and the sound of cracking ice and splashing, Edward grabbed the lantern and ran him up to help his brother. He too was pulled into the icy waters. Searchers tried to find them in the dark, but, but were unsuccessful. The next morning, the two brothers were pulled out of eight feet of water. They were clinging, we were clinging to each, each other. In 1894, Alexander's moved to Swan Lake District, later changed to Lake Hill. Their home was called Rockabella Gardens. There they celebrated their golden 1899 and Diamond 1908 Jubilees and they lived on the, the west yeah the west side of uh, of Lake Hill yeah Pat McKenzie Nancy was one of the first ladies to join Lake Hill Women's Institute and was considered to be a valued member. Nancy died March the 23rd, 1912, at the age of 78. And Charles on January 31st, 1913, at the age of 89. They lived a good life, leaving six children, 21 grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren. When I completed the family tree in 1992, there were 400 descendants. Nancy and Charles' son, Thomas, and grandson Kenneth and Norman are buried in J.D. Creek Cemetery. And five Alexanders descendants have taken their vows there. Other black pioneers named are Bonswell, Wood, Harrison, Clanton, Mitchell, Dean, Spots, Stark, Estes, Wims, Jones, and, and <laughs> I don't want to call I, I, I tell it wrong. I'm thinking of Moses. There should be Moses. I guess. <laughs> oh, close. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you.